uh, about uh, six foot three or something like that so uh, getting on for two meters so the these valves are fairly large um, but the power supply which is in the other side of the cubicle the HT transformer would be uh, about the size of a small car and uh, the specification for, for this particular machine I remember it very well so it was an oil filled water cooled transformer and you got a three phase input uh, 415 volts uh, star connected uh, primary um, no big pardon delta primary uh, star secondary and uh, the secondary was specified to give 8 kV at 30 amps DC from a three phase bridge so uh, what we used to do was actually uh, put the onus of getting the voltage right uh, on the transformer manufacturer uh, we would actually specify that we want 8 kV 30 amps DC so just let's stop and take that in uh, 8 kV 30 amps if you got across that uh, DC power supply it would boil you so I always figured there were never going to be any second chances with uh, equipment like this um, but this is this is what I was designing um, so there are anode chokes there these blue things are capacitors these are filament transformers at the back three filament transformers and uh, this is what we used to call an anode dropper and uh, there it's a, a one inch uh, diameter uh, hose uh, the smaller equipments used to use a three quarter inch hose but this is one inch diameter and there's a long length of hose around there because the anode of the, of the valve is at 8000 volts and of course the other end of the water cooled uh, hose is at ground potential um, there are other ways of doing it you can um, have the filament transformer take uh, the strain but uh, we used to have a uh, um, uh, a grounded uh, cathode on this system this particular machine um, was designed specifically for uh, zone refining silicon in an electronics application um, producing um, very pure silicon uh, products so if you're interested in uh, valves I found the uh, uh, specification for one of these valves and it's, uh, it's an English electric valve or EEV as they uh, are now uh, so BW1605J2F uh, and uh, you get to some interesting bits here the anode dissipation 40 kilowatts so you can uh, maximum dissipation on the anode 40 kil kilowatts uh, so you blow that away as hot water um, the uh, 10 kV uh, anode voltage good for 2 megahertz although I was using it at as I recall uh, somewhere uh, around the 150 kilohertz and um, uh, in a, a class C output uh, uh, it, it could uh, work at 69 kilowatts I was running them at 50 kilowatts but uh, the, uh, f <laughs> the the filaments are interesting so um, uh, thorated tungsten filament uh, you could drop one of these valves and if you didn't break the uh, the envelope you could actually break the filament so you have to be careful with that but it's only an 8.2 uh, volt filament so not very high voltage uh, but the filament current 230 amps so again stop and think about that the filament current is 230 amps um, so we uh, had fun and games with those transformers and um, to uh, stop magnemotive force actually breaking the filament so as you know you, you switch on a lot of current it can actually jump and try and squeeze itself together um, the uh, peak current was limited to 600 amps so when you switch on to a cold filament um, it mustn't uh, draw more than 600 amps so 
we would do things like uh, switch a resistor on in series with the primary and we would specify the maximum short circuit reactance of the transformers. Um, never had any problems uh, breaking filaments but it was uh, something to be aware of. So uh, this is interesting, typical operating conditions, so anode voltage 8kV which is uh, what I used to work at, uh, the grid voltage minus 760, um, the, uh, the anode current uh, 10 to 12 amps, and the uh, anode dissipation uh, 18 to 23.9 uh, kilowatts, uh, the grid drive, sorry, grid dissipation, uh, 1 to 1 1.2 kilowatts, the driving power, 2.5 to 2.8 kilowatts, um, the output power, uh, 59.6 to 69 kilowatts, and of course this was a real killer with these valves, the efficiency, 74.5 uh, to 72.1 percent. Um, so, um, uh, and, and that's, that's the efficiency of the valve, so you've got the transformers and rest of the things in the circuit getting in the way. So, say, um, when, when you see me jumping around the garden with that little <laughs> couple of hundred milliwatts, um, this, is, uh, the, this is the sort of place I've come from. Uh, so, uh, again, uh, this is interesting because uh, this is the minimum cooling water <laughs> requirements and um, let's, let's have a look, I won't go too deeply into this but uh, this is water flow in gallons per minute down the side here so this is uh, two, four, six, eight gallons per minute and this is the anode plus grid dissipation so 10, 15, 20 kilowatts so if you're dissipating uh, 20 kilowatts there and your cooling water is at 40 degrees C um, uh, so you, you're going to want uh, uh, two and a half gallons a minute I can't remember the actual figures that I use now because this is going back a long time um, some of the problems were well not the power or the, vo you know, the voltage particularly um, but it has more to do with the cooling water and um, uh, I learned that a bucket of water is a bucket of worms when you keep on uh, circulating uh, cold water that gets warmer and warmer and um, it, you subject it to electrolysis there's, there's all sorts of things that happen it, uh, it dezinkifies the brass um, it, uh, it separates the water um, it uh, it it it's, uh, brings uh, many problems, but anyway, um, I just thought uh, uh, that might be interesting. Oh, so look, I know there was uh, some sizes in here. Um, yeah, the uh, just to give you some idea of the size of the valve. Um, uh, dimension B so from the uh, top of the valve just down to the the fixing flange so that's dimension B dimension B uh, ten and a quarter inches um, and that that's just the, the top of the valve uh, dimension P this is a water cooled anode so that thing is at 8 kV above a uh, dimension P is uh, six inches so this thing from from there to there is 16 inches um, don't know what the weight is but uh, it's uh, it's a bit of a, a bit of a beast and saying that's that's the largest um, no that's not the largest single valve I've used this is a glass envelope I've used I think it was a 75 kilowatt ceramic uh, envelope valve um, but this was the biggest machine that I built because there were the three valves running in parallel and uh, that is not without its uh, problems at, uh, at these powers. Anyway, I just wanted to share that with you. Um, 
and uh, if, <laughs> if if size matters, then I, I think I qualify for uh, uh, for one of the big ones with uh, with this bit of equipment. Pity I haven't got more details about it, but of course when I uh, sold uh, my part of the company, um, uh, all of the records, of course, went with the company. But uh, anyway, I, I've got that old uh, valve uh, record and uh, one or two pictures of the uh, equipment. So, I hope you found that interesting. Well, I hope you didn't find that uh, too boring. Um, over the, my uh, 30 years of working with uh, RF equipment, um, I've been involved in all sorts of applications and uh, usually I've been working with people at the forefront of their technology and very often they'd turn up on our doorstep and uh, they were looking for us to guide them and help them to move forward uh, so it was always very nice and uh, say all sorts of applications cars aircraft uh, uh, silicon products um, uh, I could spend rather a long time wittering on about it anyway these are just uh, some of the QSL cards that um, I put on here uh, if you see yours <laughs> let me know um, and uh, as I say uh, be interested to have a bit of feedback and see uh, what you guys uh, think but uh, I thought this um, was a reasonably high power piece of equipment and uh, not something you see every day. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.